So Dying Light 2 is filled with easter eggs and secret items that oftentimes completely change up your gameplay. Surprisingly though there are still a lot left in the game to be discovered but in this video we're taking a look at 5 really amazing items that will let you fly, force choke enemies or simply abuse them with magical frying pans among many other things. So let's begin. Now one of the most important things you need to know before proceeding is that most of these can only be acquired after after finishing up the broadcast mission so make sure you have done that beforehand and let's get started with the flying broom which is one of my favorites in the game since it's one of the only items that actually lets you fully fly in dying light 2. now the way you find this is from the building just on the right side of the vnc tower essentially just jump down and aim at the top of this crane with your paraglider and right below its max level behind this ladder you're going to notice a strange formation of mushrooms what you have to do in this case is to simply grow them by interacting with them several times and at the end of this you're gonna be presented with a race challenge and during this challenge is when you're gonna get access to the broom that yes you can fully fly it also has full flight controls and it's possibly the only item of its kind in the game so yeah it's definitely worth checking out who knows maybe Techland will add something like this or similar in a future Halloween event. Moving on to number two, there's also another vehicle so to speak in the game, this time around a hoverboard. Now you get this from the church east of the St. Paul district. What you have to do is to get inside of the church and make your way in the room that's just above the entrance. Here you will see there's a power line and what you have to do is to grab it and bring it at the top, exiting the building and then going into the bell tower right here at this jump box. And once you power that area up you will now need to head over to the top of the tower using the balcony just opposite of that generator and now that the radio is powered up you can simply listen to it and at the end of it you're going to see a hoverboard spawning onto your left side and if you interact with it this will start a mini side quest where you just have to follow a bunch of red marks to about four hoverboard locations that are super easy to find but at the final one you're gonna be able to start a brand new challenge and yes during it you will get access to the second vehicle now the hoverboard has its own set of controls and i definitely suggest paying attention to w and s since these are the buttons that you need to press especially on keyboards to control its pitch otherwise you might risk getting stuck into the ground but if you nail this down it's a pretty fun challenge and it's a pretty fun mechanic to play with but totally let me know down below if you managed to get a gold medal because the best i was able to do was just bronze Moving on to number 3, there's a pen of destiny in Dying Light 2, which kind of acts as an endlessly throwable frying pan, almost like a hammer of Thor, but kind of like just a frying pan. So after finishing the main story, you have to go back to the Renegade Stronghold. What you have to do in this case is to make your way again towards the pumping station using of course the dining area hatch that you can find right here. From this point on, simply follow this area, climb to set of ladders and of course head over to the back of the building until you see this poster right here with a rooster. Now inside of this room, you'll get to talk with, well you guessed it, a chicken and if I were you, I would totally agree with everything that creature has to say. Also, it will ask you to bring a spaceship part that you can find into the southern area of the region right here just south of the stronghold on top of this car in the infected zone. And once you bring it back and agree to be taken, you'll get this blueprint of the Pen of Destiny after waiting just a few seconds as usual. Of course, it costs a lot of scraps to craft again, but you only need to do it once and this kind of acts as Thor hammer as I've said but kind of like in a pan form as in no matter how much you throw it at enemies it will always come back in your inventory it's a pretty great way to spam knockdowns against enemies you can like just damage them infinitely the only downside is that it only deals about 10 damage which I think you can totally buff with a ranger set but I haven't tested that out yet so again if you did totally let me know down below moving on to number four since we were talking about crazy items let's talk about a pair of boots that will give you a double jump mechanic and will make you lose your head. 
both literally and figuratively but it's going to be right next to the bandit camp in the lower dam district right here on this side of the map simply start from these shipping containers and then just make your way into the suspended one above inside of it there's another dying light to easter egg and you can also hear a certain message but sitting on the bed will spawn the item called it's me marion and this basically is a set of level one boots of great quality with no stats but that give you a certain functionality so every third jump that you do now with your character while these are equipped will cause your character to do a third person front flip all of a sudden and a mario like emote since this is obviously a mario easter egg which also exposes the fact that you are headless since the very beginning and that's quite funny given the fact that there's a fully functioning third person camera mode in dying light 2 that for some reason doesn't get utilized at all nonetheless this brings us to a doom zelda and star wars easter egg all into one again after you completed the broadcast mission so what you have to do in this case is to find five demonic rubber ducks in these five locations scattered around the map that i neatly marked down for you and if you want to see an entire step-by-step -step guide i highly recommend checking out ashes wolf over on youtube as they were likely the first ones to find about this at least from my knowledge now the first rubber duck can be found in the Houndfield district on this side of the map in the contaminated swamp right across the street street between these trees right here. The second one is going to be located west of the garrison in this abandoned area so to speak. There's going to be a military facility here and what I suggest doing in case the main door is closed is to just use the north wall section right here. There's a collapsed little area that you can simply just use wall run to reach and it's super easy. From this point on make your way to the second tower simply using the barbed wire fence as you can step over it quite easily. Meanwhile, the third rubber duckling is going to be located between downtown and the wharf district. What you have to do is to use these ropes beneath this bridge to make your way onto the other side and then just run across the yard until you can jump into the water. And here you will notice that there's a vehicle inside of the water. Simply open its trunk and you're gonna find the third rubber duck right there. The fourth one is going to be located south of the border of the lower dam and the Newfoundland and it's going to be located by the side of this lake simply jump one level up and it should be located on these blue posts right here the fifth one and the final one is going to be back at the vnc tower what you have to do is to just jump one level below the roof so use this lamppost right here and make absolutely sure that you're also using active landing when dropping inside of the room below or otherwise you might just die inside of this you're going to find a clue on the desk which basically gives you the code for this safe and you have to input 666 basically to get the fifth and final duckling and once you do that you're gonna go back at the basement of the vnc tower so again take the elevator to the basement and once you reach that location trace back through the water onto the opposite side of it and go through this semi-open door at the end of the tunnel there you will find a second elevator and in this case what you have to pick is level zero that you guessed it brings you to the doom level now here there's a bunch of other stuff that i have to do basically after you put down the ducklings and use those cables to form a pentagram you will summon this weapon which gives you access to a challenge room which is yes a doom level but also a couple of blueprints inside the first one is going to be the mistress sword what you have to do is to keep on to the right side of the zone and then enter this green area once you're here simply head onto the second entrance onto the left and you should find the mystery sword blueprint right here on this box the second one is going to be back from that green level and onto that second corridor i was talking about and immediately after entering it pay close attention to the wall on the right because it's fully openable and it gives you access to a bonus level and in that bonus room in the middle of it you're going to find that second blueprint this time around for the dying force and i want to start things off with the dying force this really 
really makes you feel like a well sith lord in this case you just aim it at an enemy or group of enemies and they will get immediately force choked into the air it doesn't really do much damage but it's a great way to immobilize a full group of enemies which exposes them to a lot of damage from you and the second one is the mistress sword a craftable weapon of a really interesting quality it seems to be just gray and it doesn't come with too much damage and it barely even scratches enemies even like low level zombies so i kind of wonder if there's any additional component to make this sword a little bit tougher because right now it kind of hits like a wet noodle i think this is a zelda reference if i'm not mistaken but totally let me know down below and also if there's any additional requirements that you might know of that might make the mistress sword a lot better and this is it with some of the easter eggs totally let me know down below if you discovered anything else in the meantime i've checked a lot of the in-game files and there's so many other cool things that have yet to be discovered as always if you enjoyed this video at any point it would be awesome if you liked it subscribed and especially so activated that notification bell as i said previously we're trying to reach 400k subs at the end of the year and we couldn't possibly do it without you this is it thanks so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time